Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Sean Silikoff with the Globe and Mail. Um, it's uh, my pleasure to uh, introduce the Honorable Navdeep Baines, Canada's uh, Minister of Innovation, Science, and Economic Development. Minister Baines is also the Member of Parliament for the riding of Mississauga Melton. Uh, his first act since he was appointed uh, Minister in 2015 was to uh, restore the long-form census. Since then, Minister Baines uh, has been actively engaged with Canada's business community uh, and, of course, has been the government's point person on the Innovation and Skills Plan, uh, which has been a key priority for the Government of Canada and was a centerpiece of the 2017 federal budget. Uh, the goal of the plan is to create new jobs and business opportunities for Canadians by making Canada a world-leading centre for innovation. Minister Baines also spearheaded negotiations among the provinces and territories that led to the Canadian Free Trade Agreement. Uh, finally, Minister Baines has been a leading advocate for diversity and inclusion. So, uh, with no further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the Honourable Navdeep Baines. Thank you very much, uh, Sean, for that uh, introduction. He seemed very reluctant when he had to introduce me there. Uh, he's much more animated when we speak over the phone when he has tough questions to ask me. So thank you, Sean, for that kind introduction. And uh, it really is a tough act uh, to follow Dominic Barton and Amanda Lang. So I have no idea who set up the agenda. But thank you very, very much for that. Je suis heureux d'être de retour au sommet sur la croissance de forme des politiques publiques. It really is, is a pleasure for me to return to the Public uh, Policy Forum's uh, Growth Summit. And I want to take this opportunity to thank Ed uh, and for his leadership and, and doing a tremendous job of putting this together. I truly am delighted uh, to have the opportunity to speak uh, to you about one of my absolute favorite topics, and that's the Innovation Supercluster Initiatives. You might have heard this. Uh, but it's really about the theme of this, of this conference and what we're all here to discuss. How can we unlock growth opportunities through this initiative? How can we improve our productivity and competitiveness and create tens of thousands of jobs in the process as well? So if you uh, take a look at this room, it's a pretty impressive room. There are innovators here, uh, innovators who are building businesses, helping to transform our economy, uh, creating jobs and making Canada a household name for innovation and more importantly, making us more competitive relative to the other jurisdictions, because we truly have to see ourselves not only within the Canadian context, but the global context as well. And this room is uh, filled with individuals who know that Canada is really having a moment. And I sense that with the conversations I have with many of you when I travel across the country. Our economy is strong, the fastest growing in the G7, well over 3%, 3.2% to be exact. That's the Minister of Finance sending me a note every single morning uh, since we formed government. We have a sound and stable and predictable business climate that is supported by low taxes and business costs. And according to the World Bank, in terms of ease of doing business in the G20, Canada is ranked number one. And since November of 2015, I just mentioned that random date, but November of 2015, Canadians have created over 600,000 jobs, and our unemployment rate is at a historic low. So again, this is something that we can't you know, take for granted, and it really is a point of pride for many Canadians. Companies are attracted to invest in Canada because we have the infrastructure to innovate, as well as world-leading talent and expertise. And you've heard the Prime Minister speak about this often and eloquently that our people and our diversity is a true competitive advantage. And what's the mood like? Because this is often the question I get from people. What's the, what's the mood like out there, uh, specifically from the business community? So I think it's important to note that Canada is doing exceptionally well. In fact, the Bank of Canada's first quarter survey of executives showed that Canadian industry is feeling more positive about the future than ever. So the executives understand that our economy is strong and robust and headed in the right direction, and they're feeling optimistic. But we must and we can do better. You know, we have a challenge uh, when it comes to unlocking the growth in the long term. And I firmly believe that innovation can be a driver to unlock that growth and make us more productive and improve our overall competitiveness. 
And this is our government's commitment to you. Uh, J'ai été honoré que le Premier ministre me demande d'être ministre de l'Innovation, des Sciences et du Développement économique. Uh, it's really uh, an incredibly important file, I must say. I really am honored to be the minister responsible for innovation, science, and economic development. I have a ritual when I'm in Ottawa, as I walk to on Parliament Hill, I pinch myself every day because it truly is an honor to be a member of Parliament and also a minister responsible for this incredible portfolio. Because if you have the right plan in place, you create jobs, propel industry, catalyze innovation, and set Canada up for a bright future. So you have enormous opportunity. I have an enormous opportunity to be in this position to help drive some of this change. So what is the right way to develop our economy? You know, we have robust conversations. We have campaigns on this. We have many debates on this. I remember when I was a student growing up, I would talk to my fellow business students about this as well. But ultimately, what is the right way to develop our economy, and how do we have sustained growth? And yes, you heard from the panel before, as I just entered the room, there's going to be challenges. There might be a potential recession. We don't know when. Uh, so we have to keep that in mind. So I think it's important, uh, and you people can appreciate this from the business community, that we need to have a plan. And I started with a plan, and that plan was called the Innovation and Skills Plan. And that plan is about innovators. It is designed to help Canadian companies start up, scale up, and reach global success. So the plan is, again, global ambition. The plan is for us to succeed, not only in the context of North America, but globally as well. It includes new strategies to develop and attract world-class talent, incentivize more cutting-edge research collaboration, and grow and expand Canadian businesses through new sources of investment. In fact, uh, as the Council of Canadian Academics found in their recent report on the state of Canadian science, technology, and R&D before 2015, Canada is a highly innovative nation, but significant barriers prevent the translation of innovations into wealth creation. This is a challenge we've heard for many, many years, and it's something that we're very mindful of. And these include declining business-led investments in research and development. And this is one of the first numbers that you know, stood out for me when I took on this responsibility, took on this portfolio, that Canada ranks 22 out of the 35 OECD countries when it comes to business-led research and development. And we need to improve uh, collaboration between industry and academia. And this poses a challenge that our government wanted to very much solve. We wanted to unlock all that, you know, growth and all that, in particularly all that cash off the balance sheets of these companies. So because uh, as the pace of global and technological adoption change accelerates, impacting jobs and firm success, industry and governments around the world are taking action to create the conditions required to remain at the forefront of competition in today's economy. So this innovation and skills plan is our effort to try and create these conditions and unlock the potential of Canadian industry to put innovators in the driver's seat when it comes to our economy. The plan sees us making strategic investments in Canadian companies. And this is a very comprehensive plan. The Innovation Skills Plan is not one policy or one program or one budget. It's successive budgets over a successive number of years, and it's very comprehensive. It's about bridging broadband connections to rural and remote communities. It's about investing in tech adoption and growth in rural Canada. It's leveraging the power of government procurement to help Canadian innovators investing in the venture capital ecosystem and increasing the availability of growth capital for clean tech companies, just to name a few. I mean, this really reflects us examining the entire ecosystem, looking at where the gaps exist and what the role of government can be to address those gaps. So we had a very comprehensive plan based on the feedback we received from industry. But the cornerstone of this plan is the Innovation Super Clusters Initiative. We knew that Canadian businesses needed a push to collaborate both with themselves and with academia and government when it came to innovation. And as I mentioned, we were also focused on boasting business investment 
in research and development. Because again, we were lagging behind other countries when it came to this key metric. So to adopt a made in Canada solution to increase business investment in research and development, improving industry, academia, collaboration, I sought feedback from leaders across the country. Some of, who are, some of you are in this room as well, and I want to thank you again for actively participating in this conversation. Your feedback helped inform Canada's innovation superclusters initiative. You know, around the world, superclusters exist, so this is not a completely brand new concept. Silicon Valley, Berlin, Tel Aviv. In these areas, there are rich ecosystems of businesses academia, and government actors working together to create jobs and drive growth in key areas, in high growth areas. But this is also about building and strengthening technological capabilities and participating in the global innovation race as a leader, not as a follower. So first of all, I think it's a clear recognition. We're not competing between Montreal or Toronto or Vancouver or Halifax. We are in a global innovation race. We are competing with other jurisdictions. So let's talk about some of those jurisdictions. Let's talk about Silicon Valley. You know, Silicon Valley benefited from government partnering with industry and academia through the DARPA program. Many of you are familiar with this program, which sets the strategic priorities and funds the development and execution of groundbreaking innovation that responds to challenges and technology opportunities. This model was so successful, it's now being used in the field of clean technology as well. So again, clear role of government in terms of driving the economic activity in that ecosystem. In Israel, the office of the chief scientist, known as the Israeli Innovation Authority, filled an important gap in the Israel innovation ecosystem by making bets on cutting edge technology throughout the innovation continuum. Its startup, growth, and technological infrastructures divisions have helped ensure that Israel's innovation ecosystem become resilient and adaptable. Perhaps the most notable of all is Germany's Fraunhofer Institutes, which as many of you know, have proven the importance of government, industry, and academia together, working together to innovate. It's an incredible model. The co-funding model used by these institutes show that when it came to innovation, leading industries were willing to put money on the table and work together with academia, with government. You know, and we looked at innovation economies and we looked at what worked and didn't work. So when we went out and talked to you, we also talked to our international partners. We looked at what jurisdictions were succeeding and which ones were falling behind. And we set out to build a shared competitive advantage for Canadian clusters that will position Canada as a world leading innovation system. You know, we set out to, uh, to advance a range of business-led innovation and technology leadership activities that will boost productivity, perform, performance in Canada's competitiveness in areas of existing economic strength. So we wanted to make sure we put forward a plan in Canada that played to our strengths here, that played to our home court advantage. So we set out to create new companies and products and position firms to scale so Canadian firms could be integrated into global value chains, transition to high value activities, and become global leaders. And by the way, we set out to create thousands of middle class jobs as well. Because I'm not sure if you're familiar, but 2019 is just around the corner and we gotta justify this to Canadians as well. <laughs> so we put a $950 million investment on the table and asked Canadian businesses of all sizes and academic institutions to work together. We use our ability to convene, our power to convene. This is one of the most effective tools we have in our toolbox. The ability to bring people together, governments together, industry together, academic institutions together, civil society together. And we ask them to come up with bold and ambitious strategies to supercharge regional economies and develop super clusters. Again, the key part being is here, we're using a convening power, but this is business led. We said we would co-invest in the best super cluster pitches with industry matching our contributions dollar for dollar. And the response was incredibly positive. It was overwhelmingly positive. It exceeded our expectations. The response had over 50 letters of intent. So we had 50 different organizations and individuals and companies come together. 
And they reflected over 1,000 businesses and 350 uh, participants, including many academic institutions. And the outcome? Canada selected five superclusters representing more than 450 businesses, including more than 300 SMEs. And I think that's really critical to note, that yes, big business played a key role, but small businesses also participated in a meaningful way as well. 60 post-secondary institutions and 180 other participants from across Canada's innovation industries came together. The five superclusters are expected to generate more than 50,000 new middle-class jobs and grow Canada's economy by $50 billion over the next 10 years. And these are really conservative numbers. When we went out there, we got third parties to validate these numbers. We looked at the business plans and said, what is the most conservative number we can share with the public? And I can tell you with a fair level of confidence that this initiative will create 50,000 middle-class jobs and generate $50 billion of economic activity over the next 10 years. As you know, the winning superclusters are the ocean economy, based in Atlantic Canada, uh, artificial intelligence-powered supply chains based in Quebec, uh, next-generation manufacturing based in Ontario, and protein industries based in the prairies, and digital technology based in British Columbia. And by the way, they're already working with one another. So not only the super clusters doing tremendous work in terms of putting together the consortium and now unlocking a lot of the money for R&D, but they're starting to collaborate with one another as well. And the best part is industry just didn't match our contribution dollar for dollar. They pledged to exceed it. So this is really incredible, and I think industry really took this challenge to heart, and they really stepped up. But there's another point I wanted to mention as well. Our government recognizes the strategic importance and the use of intellectual property and how essential it is in the knowledge economy. So we ensure that all superclusters work to find the best approach to ensuring Canadian-made ideas lead to Canadian prosperity. So the IP that's generated by these superclusters should benefit Canadians. The superclusters initiatives was warmly received, hotly debated, and stirred up age-old discussions on economic ideology, to invest or not to invest. And some critics have said that they'd scrap the supercluster initiative altogether. They called it, and wait for this, some of you might have heard this, corporate welfare. Well, our government believes that uh, prudence should be balanced by bold acts, that growth does not come without investment in the future, and that success starts by investing in Canadian people and ideas and in Canadian communities. We do this because Canadian taxpayers and Canadian taxpayer dollars should go towards one thing, and that is Canadians. We know that by investing in innovators, in their capacity to grow, the economy will drive real change, and they will drive real change. And that will see returns on investment that will benefit Canadians everywhere. You know, returns that result in jobs, invention, economic growth, community building, productivity, and making Canada a more competitive jurisdiction. In the world's most successful innovation economies, governments are active partners. And that's the point I wanted to make. When we went out there and we examined what worked, what didn't work, we realized that the economies that are doing well have an active government in investing in cutting-edge research and development, helping scale up innovative firms, and collaborating with business and academia to build strong ecosystems. Sitting on the sidelines in the global innovation race has some, as some have suggested, would mean that we would fall further behind. And I'm not willing to let Canada fall behind. Not, not the Canada that welcomed my father and mother, not the Canada that I'm raising my girls in. There's too much at stake, and that's why we're playing an active role. We must do more. We must take action, and we must deliver. This is our responsibility to Canadians and to this nation. Notre gouvernement fait des investissements intelligents et stratégiques. When this government invests, not only do we invest smartly, we invest strategically. And you heard again from the speakers before about an active government, but being more thoughtful and strategic about our investments. We invest to leave Canada a better place than we found it, and that's our promise to Canadians. And that's why I'm involved in politics. That's why I decided to knock on doors, put my face on a bunch of posters, <laughs> participate in debates. Because a genuine desire to improve things, to make sure the stuff that we've inherited 
that we actually leave it better off for future generations. And that's why we asked each supercluster to include a gender and diversity plan as well. Because innovators come in all shapes and sizes and innovation must benefit the many, not just the few. This is something I heard loud and clear from people when I knocked on doors and even now when I have town hall sessions. When we talk about globalization, when we talk about trade, we have to recognize that if we want to succeed in this global innovation race, it has to benefit the many, not just the few. Because more women and underrepresented groups will succeed in skilled jobs in highly innovative industries. And it allows us to tap into our local talent. Yes, we're a proud country and we believe in immigration and we're, we introduce a global skill strategy bringing in the best and brightest from around the world. But we also have to tap in to the unlocked potential that exists within uh, the women in our society, with our indigenous people, with underrepresented groups as well. So I think no matter what side of the supercluster you fall on, we can all agree that this is something truly to be proud of. So in conclusion, the supercluster's initiatives doesn't tell the private sector how to succeed. Our government isn't claiming to know what's right for business. We're acknowledging that innovators know best how to innovate. And so we really set the rules for co-investment that align with our principles. Again, this is led by business. The framework for partnership is there. Now it's really up to the innovators and businesses to spell out how they will win. And I look forward to seeing what each of the supercluster does in the coming months and years, the technologies they advance, the value chains they build, the jobs they create, the skills they develop, the companies and communities they grow. All of this making Canada a more competitive jurisdiction. So I won't keep you much longer as I understand there's an exciting panel. They're standing right there giving me dirty looks. Um, with the same uh, with ind individuals who understand industry and are experts. But once again, I'd like to thank you sincerely for your time and thank you for your continued commitment to Canadian industry and innovation. Thank you very much for stepping up and participating in this process. And we look forward to seeing a healthy and robust conversation take place momentarily. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup.